Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this installation of the Skills Workshop Virtual Careers Fair featuring Julius Fair. For those of you who have been here before and who have been following the program since June, welcome back. And to all who are joining us for the first time, a hearty welcome goes out to you as well. I am your host, Anika Benaby, and we created the Skills Workshop to give you the skills, insight, and knowledge you need to prepare for a career in asset management and to help you increase application success. All sessions are free to register and registration details can be found in the chat box. Our virtual careers fair is like no other. Over the months of September and October, we're featuring 41 different firms every day, each for one hour. They tell you what they do, how they hire, and the skills you need to demonstrate in order to stand out from other applicants. So yesterday, you heard from GIC, which was a global fund manager and sovereign wealth uh, fund wholly owned by the Singaporean government. Tonight, you will hear from my very own firm, Julius Baer. I'm a portfolio manager at Julius Baer, and what that simply means is clients depend on me to invest their money on their behalf in order to reach their financial goals. Joining me this evening are Anita Masai and Zoe Moore, and between us, we'll introduce our firm, talk about what we do, and the different areas of our businesses. Most importantly, we'll touch on our programs, how you can apply, deadlines, and other useful bits of information. So listen carefully. This will be packed with helpful tips. I'll now ask Anita and Zoe to quickly introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Anita? My name is Thank you. Thank you very much, Anika. Hi, everyone. My name is Anita Massey, and I am the Head of Talent at Julius Bear International, and I'm really pleased to be on this webinar today. Over to you, Zoe. Hello, everyone. I am a current apprentice at Julius Bear, and I have been with the firm for over a year now. Great. So now that we all know who we are, just a quick reminder, this is a webinar, so we can't see your faces, but we can certainly try to answer all of your questions. So please put your questions in the Q&A function. So without further ado, grab your pencil and paper and let's get started. I'm just waiting for the slides to come up and then we can roll. All right, so who's Julius Baer? Who are we? So we're a leading Swiss wealth manager and we help private clients to grow, protect and pass on their wealth. Some of the services that we include are wealth planning. So this includes things like financial planning, uh, succession planning, relocation, taxation, that sort of thing. We also offer investing services, and this is where I come in. So clients can have discretionary mandates. That simply means they delegate the decision-making, the investment decision-making to us on their behalf. They can also be as involved in investing as they want with advisory mandates. And finally, we also provide fin financing. So for things like mortgages, just in terms of the numbers, we manage about 433 billion Swiss francs in assets, and we're about 6,600 employees worldwide. So I like to think of our business, if we can move on to the next slide. I really like to think about what we do as a very client-centric business. We're a people business, and that's one of the reasons why clients like to work with us. Other reasons include the fact that we're a very stable business. So we've been around for a long time. We have a solid balance sheet, we're profitable. Um, we also are a pure wealth manager. So we're focused on that, that's what we do. 
We don't have other conflicting parts of the business, such as investment banking, for example. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of personal connections. So I know who my clients are. I know what makes them tick. I know their children. And that works very well for us because in that way, we can provide excellent service to our clients. And finally, we have an international network and a global footprint. And so we're really able to be in close proximity to our clients physically. And just on that note, looking at the next slide, you can see all of the locations that we have. We're located in Europe, Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and Africa. With that, let me pass over to Anita to talk about the London location in particular. Thank you, Anita. So Julius Baer International, we have just under 250 people based around the UK. So London is our biggest office, um, but we also have, have offices in Leeds, in Manchester, in Edinburgh, and small office in Belfast as well. In terms of our career opportunities, there are a number of ways that uh, people can join Julius Baer International. Um, we have a dedicated recruiter on site to help uh, with all of our jobs, and we really try to make sure that we, we get our uh, vacancies out as far and as wide as possible. Now, we clearly use LinkedIn as, as an important tool as well. But in terms of more of the structured ways of, of joining Julius Bear, um, we have an apprentice program, and this is the third year, the third rotation that we've had in our, um, our apprenticeship program. So it's, um, we had the third cohort that joined us recently in September. Now, Zoe is going to be talking a little bit more about her experience, and I will leave her to bring the apprenticeship program to life a little bit, and just to share with you all how she found it, how the challenges that she found, and the things that she enjoys as well. But the apprenticeship program that we have is up to 24 months with Julius Bear International, and there are a number of different placements around our business to help people to learn a lot about our organization, through from our client facing teams all the way through to some of our risk and compliance departments to really get a breadth uh, and, and a deeper understanding of what we do. Uh, we have a, you have an opportunity at the end of the program to join us more permanently, but you'll really work very closely um, with our apprenticeship partner Fitch Learning to help you to get through all of the different stages and to get your professional qualifications with us. So we really support individuals through that. We give them time off, uh, we support them in the way that they study, and we also ensure that they are learning on the job as well. They have mentors to support them and a line manager that gets the cohort together on a regular basis to ensure that people know what they're doing, they have an opportunity to ask questions and to really grow in that role. So that's one of the ways that, um, that, that you can access Julius Baer International. Um, we have summer internships as well. So we have started small with our summer internships. We've had a couple uh, of people that have been on a, an eight week placement over the summer. One was based in London and another one lived in Glasgow. So there are really no limits in terms of where people are based and that's really important to know. We are not afraid of hiring people across different parts of the organization, working virtually with them and making sure that they can touch base at a local office near them. So we're really not afraid of hiring people that are outside of London, even though London is our biggest office. And that's really important to us culturally. And I'll talk about culture in, in a, a few more minutes. So with our summer internships, we ensure that people really get to meet um, a number of different colleagues. That's through um, from our CEO to um, our relationship managers, to our HR team, uh, to our portfolio managers. So really helping them to understand while they're with us, what do we do? What, what roles do people play? How does that really fit to all, all fit together in terms of supporting our clients? and really to help them to get a better sense of where their career ambition may, may, may uh, take them. As part of the eight weeks, we do a strength exercise with them. So really focusing on um, you know, where, where is their natural lean? Where are their strengths? How could we help them in the future? Where should they focus on? 
So um, it's a strength scope exercise that we do for a number of people as part of their development. So they have access to that too. Now from a graduate uh, programme, uh, globally we are about six and a half thousand people. So we're not huge and that's great because it means that um, we're really connected to um, other countries and um, our global organisation. Now, our graduate program starts off in Switzerland, so it's very much a Swiss program, but we have great ambitions for it to be much more of a global program. So over the course of the next two years, we'll really be looking to hire people in London and so that they can be based in London for their a couple of rotations and then they go and have a, an international assignment, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in Switzerland, whether it's in Monaco, so really giving them the breadth of that. So there's more to come on that, but unfortunately, this programme is restricted at the moment. It's an 18 month programme and at the end of it, assignees are offered a, a potential um, permanent job with us with the potential to move to an international location as well. So whilst it's restricted, that doesn't mean to say that it, um, people can't apply to it in the future. So something to, to watch out for. In terms of entry level roles, um, I have just listed here on my slides the sorts of roles that we would expect uh, people to be graduates um, and people that have left college to be thinking about. So we have an assistant relationship manager role. So that's um, quite a big lot, a part of our population. We've got about 54 people in that um, out of a total of um, 250. So sizable um, population and a really great entry level, really learning what a uh, learning how we work with our clients, being part of meetings, really getting to know how we service our clients, supporting relationship managers in ensuring we can onboard our clients. So get their accounts opened with us as quickly as possible, working with our operations team, but also working with our client onboarding team as well. So a great way to learn, learn the ropes and really great starting point to uh, for people um, if they want to think about becoming a junior relationship manager as well. We've also got roles in risk and compliance, a great opportunity to learn how we keep our organisation organization safe, how do we ensure we work with our client facing teams to make sure that um, the wealth that we're onboarding um, is, is, is appropriate and we're keeping our clients safe too. Business support management roles. So we have a number of people that support our business, doing data analytics, data scientists, and really being able to ensure that our dashboards and our man management information um, is, is spot on, it's, it's real time, looking at how, ways to improve our organization and, and getting slicker. So those are the sorts of roles that are also potentially available. Junior portfolio managers. Now those will require some, some basic level um, qualifications that we would, we would expect people to have, but we also support people in those qualifications too, working with our portfolio managers in there in, um, to, to, help, um, to help them. And Anika is a portfolio manager, so uh, questions can be asked uh, and Anika I'm sure will be more than happy to oblige. So just a, a quick whistle stop tour uh, on the sorts of roles um, that are available at, uh, available at Julius there. Let's talk a little bit about our culture. So we are a, a relatively small organisation in the UK, but that certainly doesn't mean um, that we don't care. We're, we, we care passionately and we care about driving excellence. So we are really, when we're looking to hire, we're not really focused on um, what, uh, whether you've got a first uh, in your degree and, and um, where it's from. We care about, we really care about um, your passion. We care about um, the fact that we want to really service our clients, when and those are the sorts of things that we really that really matter to us. Inclusion is really key. Um, we really want to ensure that we have people from different backgrounds that think differently, that that aren't from uh, necessarily from um, Oxbridge, and they don't even have to go to university. We 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 care that people are passionate about what they do. And, and, and really want to excel. We, we really want to ensure that people focus on our client and that's really important, um, but pe that, that people can make a difference. Um, so that's really close to our, to, to our hearts. Um, so I suppose the point I want to make is when we don't look to hire people from traditional streams. Now, whilst that's important, we're really open to 
uh, people coming in from all, all, from different areas. And again, our apprenticeship program is a testament to that. Um, we're really looking to focus on hiring people from different socioeconomic backgrounds that may not necessarily get the sorts of opportunities and um, that people running through um, um, a university stream might get. Um, and, and even if they finish their university degree, we're really looking to hire um, and be really inclusive as well. So we widen that net. It's about a diversity of thought as well. That's really important too. So being, being part of a caring culture that focuses on excellence, but people that really care and are passionate about whatever they're going to do, delivering to our clients, whether you're client facing or whether you're working in some of our support functions, it's really important that we all know that we're contributing towards our clients at the end of the day. Now, in terms of the interview process, there are a number of different stages in our interview process, but it's really important uh, to know that what we won't do is put people through seven or eight different interviews. And, uh, and, and excuse me, that's my puppy barking in the background, if you can hear that, so my apologies. Um, so it's really important that we get to know people. Interviews are a two-way process. You are assessing us as an organization, and I'm sure you'll be really, really um, focused on our culture and how we treat people and how we treat our clients. And we'll be also looking at um, how, you know, how we think you'll do and how we think you'll develop as part of um, our organization and grow with our organization. So interviews are a two-way process. Normally, the first, the first interview is really getting to know you, making sure you understand the role and exploring that with you and building that rapport. Now, the second stage um, will be focused on um, you know, how, um, um, competency-based questions, so asking a few examples, and I've got a few examples down here on my, on my slide. These are the sorts of things that we look to ask people and really getting a sense from you as to you know, whether this is something that you really want and really, really understanding you know, what's driving you, what do you care about, and how do we think you'll help to service our organization, our clients, and really be part of a team. Being a team player is really important. We're not expecting you to know everything. What we're looking for is, is a great attitude, a great willingness to learn, and we can teach you the rest. So those um, blobs on the, on the slide will give you a bit of a sense of what we're interested in and the sorts of uh, things that uh, we want to know about you. We want to know about you so that we can help and develop you. And, and that's really important to us as well, development of our people is really close to our hearts and we, and we put a lot of effort into developing our people. So hopefully that gives you just a really quick overview of, uh, of Julius Bear and the sorts of things that we look for. So when uh, you're applying for roles, um, you're pretty, um, you've got a really good insight into, into what that means. In terms of jobs at Julius Bear, it's really you know, the sorts of things that, that you'll be doing is supporting people, supporting the day-to-day -day service, servicing of our clients, as I mentioned, really helping to think about how we really deliver a, an outstanding and excellent client service and experience to our clients as well. Helping the overall business achieve its business strategy and its goals. And we are a regulated firm and therefore making sure that we're working within a governance framework and, we're, um, um, and, and keeping our clients safe as well as our organization. We have a number of initiatives. Uh, we have a number of organizations that we partner with, um, charities. And so we're expecting all of our employees to get involved in that, something that's passionate to all of our employees. We choose our charities based on what our employees think. And that's really important, the charities that are important to them. And so we look to ensure that we have a really good breadth of charities that, uh, and communities um, that, that are important to us and that are important to our people. Being a team member and collaborating with others is really important, as I mentioned. So we're expecting people to do that as part of their day-to-day -day jobs. And we're also expecting people to take the lead on their development. Now, whilst we'll help them, we really want you to lead from the front and, and, and take that to heart. What's important to you? How do you want to grow at Julius Bear? Let's, let's help you there. But really expecting this to be a two-way street. Learning from others and learning in the job is a great way of learning. And our people are really passionate about sharing their knowledge and sharing their experience. Most people that you come in contact with at Julius Bear will be more than happy to be a mentor or a reverse mentee. And, and that's really close to our hearts too. 
but also taking the time to go for a coffee and explain. There's a huge amount of jargon in our industry. So really demystifying things is, is important. So really great opportunity to learn from others. So these are some of the very high level things that we expect, um, that, that you can expect um, in a role at Julius there. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Zoe, who's going to give a little bit of her experience of, of uh, being on the apprenticeship program and how she has found it thus far. Thank you, Anita. So as I've previously said, I was I have been on the apprenticeship scheme now for just over a year with Julia Spare. And I'd like to explain why I decided to take the apprenticeship route rather than going to university. I think that the apprenticeship route provides you with learning whilst on the job, which makes your exam so much easier to take as your exam content is basically everything that you're learning every day. Also, it provides you with two, up to two years experience um, working in the financial industry. My apprenticeship scheme consisted of rotating around the business. I have been to three rotations, which is ARM role, which is an assistant relationship manager. My second rotation was risk and compliance, and I'm back as an ARM role now. So in the ARM role, you would, you would, I've done my first year virtually, which was really, really hard learning over a screen. Um, and this would consist of client admin, meeting clients over video um, and making payments, rolling loans, etc. I also worked in risk and compliance, which consisted of controls of the business, learning the back part of the business. This enabled me to understand why certain tasks in the ARM role are needed. Now I am back in the ARM role. I've taken on more responsibility as I'm working with my own RM. Um, and this is my last six months of the rotation. The coursework side of the apprenticeship I'd like to go through is you would have to complete 400 hours um, of on the job training, which is basically all of your um, training, self-directed study, your exams you can put down, um, so that I would do daily, I would recommend, as otherwise it will bundle up. You also have to evidence any system you learn. You have to do a step-by-step -step guide, um, which I would also do daily as well. As part of the apprenticeship scheme, you will meet your skills coach every month to ensure you're on target with your coursework. Um, each exam has a two-day training course um, at the about a week before you would take your exam, which is just a classroom with lots of other people. I had to do mine virtually, which wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, but probably would have been better in a classroom. The three exams you would have to take would be Introduction to Investments and Securities, um, UK Financial Regulations, and the third one you get to pick out of 12 exams. The interview process I also carried out virtually, um, which was interesting. Um, it was harder for Julius Baird to get to know me as a person. I think now they are actually doing them in person. The apprenticeship doesn't require you to have any background in the financial industry or any experience, and there is no skill assessment to enter the Julius Baird requirements. Tips I would give on the interview would be to practice all the questions which may be asked. These are all online. And maybe just to ask two or more questions at the end about Julius Baer or who is interviewing you, their journey, et cetera. I would also say to follow Julius Baer on LinkedIn, just to know their events coming up, um, all of their news, or follow the, or go on the website just before the interview so you know the company. Tips I would give for working in the, uh, Julius Bear as an apprentice, I would go into the office as much as possible as now I think most firms are doing flexi work. So you, you'd work two days at home and three days in the office. I would say if you feel comfortable going to the office as this provides you with the best learning on every system possible, and there are always people around if you have any questions or if you're unsure on what to do. I would also say a really good tip would be to network in the business and make 
point of contacts. Um, for example, Anika, she's a PM. So if I had any questions to do with a portfolio, Anika would be able to answer my questions. I'm just catching up for five minutes, having a coffee or meeting in, in one of the meeting rooms will enable you to ask someone a question so much easier. I would also say that having a mentor slash a buddy, um, a buddy would let you, would provide you with, you know, just someone that you can talk to in the business and feel comfortable asking silly questions. Um, I actually have a mentor and a buddy, Julius Bear, and I think they give you people, um, uh, the new cohort of apprentices, I think they have actually got mentors and buddies and it really helps. Um, another tip would be, to always ask for feedback. I have found this has really helped with everything um, I have done in the apprentice apprenticeship scheme. In every role I've asked for my feedback, and, you know, some of it's going to be negative, but you really do learn and take away a lot from feedback. Another um, a personal skills, a skills test that Julia Spare made me do, <laughs> um, actually really helped me develop as a person and I think you can take these online for free and I would take one before an interview because it shows you your strengths and weaknesses and I have really picked up on that and look at it most days and just remember my strengths remember my weaknesses and make sure that I don't overthink everything which is one of my weaknesses also ask lots of questions and take lots of notes I hope I have managed to broaden your knowledge on what the apprenticeship scheme is like at Julius Fair. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zoe. That was really, really helpful. I just want to remind everyone, please send in your questions. We're moving into the Q&A session. Um, Anita is the head of talent at Julius Fair, so certainly um, you want to ask her all of the questions that uh, you may have. And Zoe has firsthand experience of what it's like. So please do get your questions in to us. Um, so we have a few questions in already. Uh, Anita, this is one for you. Do you take recent grads for full-time as well as internship positions? We do, we do take recent grads. Um, so we advertise our role through LinkedIn. Uh, we advertise them through various job boards. Um, so we do, absolutely, we take recent, recent grads. We have, um, we don't have a huge amount of hiring. And I think that's, um, it's double-edged. It's positive because it means that we haven't had lots of people leave. Uh, but equally, every now and then we will get uh, vacancies and um, absolutely we will, we will take recent grads as well. And I guess along that line is of questioning, which university year groups are eligible for summer internships? So um, we have had for internships, we had somebody that had just completed their degree and we had somebody who was in, um, uh, in their third year and was going back to complete their final year. So that's the kind of range that we would, that we would look at, but we're happy to consider, um, you know, anyone that is, um, has, is in, is, finished their first year and is uh, up and ready to go for an eight week program over the summer. So it's just making sure that they're available uh, from July, um, middle of July through to the middle of August. Great, thank you. We're flexible, so we, we have Anika. one. We're flexible. Oh, sorry. We're flexible. Good, thank you, thank you. Zoe, we have one for you. Um, what is the work-life balance like for a more junior hire? What, what hours are you working at the moment? So the job is nine to five. Um, however, with the apprenticeship scheme, you do get 20% of your hours after study, entering hours, um, evidencing on your portfolio. So I take an hour out of my day to study, which is normally four till five onwards. Um, so you don't actually work nine to five as you do have 20% of studying for your three exams. I guess, thanks Zoe. I can add to that as a, you know, a full-time employee and someone who has been working at Julius Bayer for eight years. Um, I think the work-life balance is actually very, very good. You know, I have a husband, um, a young son. Um, I'm able to 
end the day at a reasonable hour. Obviously, there are intense moments um, when we're trading and such. Then, you know, I can work later, but the, that's really few and far between. So I'd say the work-life balance is really, really good at Julius Baer. So Anita, another one for you. Um, a working professional from India um, is asking which role, which kind of roles would be appropriate, um, I guess, generally for working professionals, people coming in um, from other organizations, and where would you find those roles? Sure. So we, um, so portfolio management, uh, portfolio managers, we have um, vacancies We've had vacancy in the portfolio um, manager space. Um, if somebody is a relationship manager, um, that's a tough gig because we're expecting people to have experience. At risk and compliance, uh, we will have vacancies coming up at some point. So it's it's really looking on LinkedIn, following us on Julius Bear. And sometimes we may go to a specific search firm if, if it's a senior role and uh, because we're looking for specific skills and experience. Um, but certainly if somebody's um, um, working in a different country, that does not exclude them from coming to work for us. We have recently hired somebody where we uh, will sponsor them and we will take them through the visa immigration process. That is certainly not an obstacle for us. So you have gotta keep a lookout of the sorts of jobs that you might be interested in. And um, and then you can get in touch with us and we can have a conversation. Keep an eye on LinkedIn is the key. Good. Um, Anita, another one for you. Do you offer places for industrial placement? Um, so that is a full year. I'm assuming that is a, a 12 month placement in between degrees. And That's we it. Don't, yeah, we don't at this point. And I think part of the reason is because we want to make sure it's a success. It's certainly something that we could consider in the future. Um, but uh, we need to invest in the infrastructure to make that work. But it's certainly something I'll take on board and think about whether we do something like that in the future. I myself benefited from an industrial placement when I was uh, um, um, studying for my degree. So I absolutely see the value in that. And I will take that away. So it's not something that we do now. We really wanted to make sure we embedded our apprenticeship program. And now that's in a really good place it's certainly something that we will consider. So between that industrial placement and, and a global graduate program, those are the things that we'll be moving forwards on over the course of the next couple of years. Good, Zoe, let me bring you in here. What are the people like at Julius Baer and what's your favorite part of the job? At Julius Bear, everyone is so helpful. That's one thing I will say. I mean, there has been so many times I have struggled with systems, especially over screen virtually for the first year. Um, and I would say everyone, I could just call someone and they would help me unless obviously they're trading. <laughs> um, and I would say that the best part of the job so far I was is in the role that I'm in now, which is ARM and talking to clients and just getting to know their life, who their children are, what they do in general, the holidays they go on, just their life in general, getting to know clients. Wonderful. Thank you, Zoe. I, I would say similarly, I really enjoy helping people. Like I mentioned, this is a very people-centric business. So if you're good at building relationships, um, engendering trust, then this is maybe something you, you should consider. Um, and just on that, we have a question asking, who are our clients? Um, I can take a stab at that and, and Anita, you can as well. Oh. And Zoe actually. So we deal with private clients, people just like you, you and me. Uh, families, um, entrepreneurs, people who are looking, like I said, to grow, um, invest, protect, and ultimately pass on their wealth. Anything to add, Anita or Zoe? Absolutely, let me step in here. So yes, we, we work with high net worth individuals. So um, you've got to have a certain amount of money to open a, 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 an account with us. 
and and yes they're private individuals they're not big corporate organizations we don't deal with big institutions so that means we can really get personal and get to know people on a one-to-one -one basis and so that we can really service their individual needs and that's what matters to us i would just like to add that our clients aren't just UA. our clients are based all over the world um, and that makes meeting them harder but we do still take on clients from saudi arabia etc Okay, Anita, a few more for you. Um, are we disadvantaged if we do not already have internship experience? No, absolutely not. Um, we're not looking for lots of internship experience. We're really looking for people that care, people that really want to work hard, have a strong work ethic, that are willing to learn and are willing to develop. So it's really the willingness that, uh, that we're looking for. And like I said, we can teach them the rest. It's the it's the attitude that we look for, and um, and and we, people that really want to want to develop and grow themselves, but also um, help and focus on our communities that we are passionate about as well. So our charities that we work with, uh, we we do a lot with mental health. We work with a charity called the Sure Mind. Mental health is important to us, not only for our employees, but really supporting our clients too. So people that are passionate about, about those sorts of things are the people that we want to hire. So definitely not disadvantaged if you don't have internship experience. And we have a few questions around recruiting timelines, deadlines. When should you start to, to look to get your applications into Julius Baer? So for our apprenticeship, apprenticeship program, it's around July, August. We tend to move quite quickly uh, because we're, we're a small organization. We don't have to go through huge amounts of approvals. So we're pretty agile in the ways that we work. So. Um, most recently, we advertised our apprenticeship um, roles on the um, government website. So keeping an eye on the government website around June, July next year is really important. So like I said, we've just hired our latest cohort um, of apprentices. So uh, June, July next year will be the time to be looking. Look on the government website. That's where we'll be. Um, as people... Uh, submit their applications, the timeline will move quite quickly, we will get in touch with people, we'll have a quick phone conversation with them, invite them in for um, an assessment day. We did an assessment day this year because it's just an easier way of getting to know people face to face, asking them to do a, just a short presentation to get to know them, and then a just a panel interview around competencies. After that, we were offering jobs out. So it's not long winded. It's it's pretty short. It's agile, but it's still really important that we get the right people. So being able to shine, being able to show that you care, that you're willing to learn, to roll your sleeves up, that's what we care about. And that we have a question about what to include in your cover letter uh, as part of, of your application. I think, Anita, you just answered that really well. Um, Zoe, let me bring you in again. How hands-on do you feel, you know, your role has been? So I would say when I first joined um, in my ARM role, I'm going to compare both rotations, my first rotation, my last rotation. Um, when I first joined, I was just sort of doing copy and paste for two weeks. Um, and then I would say now I'm rolling loans, I'm making payments. I am an ARM on my own. So I have my own RM. Um, so I am the main point of contact for all of his clients now. I do everything admin side. So I would say the responsibility that you pick up just within a year, that's all I've been at GDS Bear, um, has really increased. And I would say I've developed huge amounts since I first started. I mean, they're not going to give you lots of responsibility, but you do gain so much just by being there for a year. And how many apprentices are there, Zoe? We have a question about how many apprentices and grads we, we take in. So the first cohort of apprentices, I believe, was five. Um, and there was four boys, one girl. Um, the second cohort, which is what I'm in, is three boys, one girl. And 
the third cohort of apprentices is four um, and they are all boys. Good, thank you. Anita, several more questions for you, <laughs> um, just around post-grad opportunities in finance and investment banking. Uh, we don't do investment banking, but certainly in finance, can you think of any post-grad um, opportunities? So I think um, absolutely from a postgrad perspective. So you know you're you're able and eligible to apply for any of our roles that we advertise. Okay, depending on um, the stream and the and the area of focus in your career, um, you know we do have quite a lot of, as you can imagine, uh, quite a lot of data that we have to uh, manage. Uh, we have a small middle office um, that really helps and supports us in client service. And um, and, and we have um, our COO or business support team. So again, an opportunity there. Our finance team in the UK is pretty small because a lot of our finance, uh, finance team, uh, we get support from our head office in Zurich. So, uh, so that department is small, but perfectly formed. Okay, just encouraging you to keep sending your questions in. We still have a bit of time left. Anita, we have some questions around sponsorship of visas, um, as well as opportunities to travel um, in between offices. So, mm -hmm. so international opportunities within uh, Julius Baer. Um, yeah. Can you expand upon that? Sure. So Anika, you are a prime example of having moved from the Bahamas uh, to the UK a couple of years ago. So great opportunity and, and that was fantastic. So we do move people around and clearly with, uh, within the last 18 months, that has been pretty difficult to do in the pandemic to hire people uh, from different parts of our organisation, move people around, but also um, allow people to... Um, you know, move from different countries as well. But it's something, you know, we are small enough to be able to do that as a global organization. We sponsor people, absolutely. If we want to hire somebody that isn't based in the UK, but they have the skills, they have the right attitude, um, they have the experience. If we want, if we need experience for that particular role, then we will sponsor their visa. That's not a problem. We are, we live in a global world and, and it's really important that we, we, um, we have a, a a diverse team at Julius Bear. So that's important to us. People won't get excluded just because we need to get them a visa. That's really, really great to hear. And, and you know, this is something that's um, near and dear to me. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about my experience. Mm -hmm. I was actually running the discretionary business in the Bahamas. And after five years of doing that, five and some years, um, I took the opportunity to relocate uh, to join the portfolio management team in London. And aside from COVID, <laughs> it's really, really been um, developmental professionally and personally for me um, and my career. And I would recommend it um, highly. So Julius Baer has been really, really good with that. Uh, it was a very smooth process moving my family and myself uh, to London. We have a question about sponsorship of a tier four visa, graduate international students. Anita, I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm, I'm not an immigration expert, but I'm sure, and we have a team of people that help and support us with that. So I wouldn't be able to answer that now, but I could come back and I could confirm um, whether we would do that. So um, I don't. I don't know if I'm perfectly honest on at that level. That 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 visa. I'm. I'm not familiar with it. I'm afraid. Okay. Zoe, what steps would you recommend uh, to take um, to prepare to enter into this field? I would definitely say the strength scope test, which I actually took whilst I was at Julius Bear. If I took that before, knowing my strengths and weaknesses and where to focus on more um, really helped me develop. Um, for example, I'm happy to share that I'm an overthinker and I like to do everything detailed. I've learned in this job that you cannot do anything as detailed as you like. Um, obviously, there are some 
client emails that are more urgent than something else and you have to stop straight away. So I have learned that my weakness, um, my strength, sorry, is actually a weakness in the job. So I would really say taking a skills test slash personality test really helps you understand and develop in your role. Great. And I would say as well, just to add to that, if you're looking for a role um, specifically in investments, you know, look at doing the IMC, the investment management certificate. Um, it's offered by CFA UK. And also, um, if you want to delve a bit more deeply, you know, look at doing the CFA designation. I found it uh, to be extremely useful in my role, just being able to put everything into context when investing. So we have a question actually about the CFA um, and I guess any other uh, higher education. What support does Julius Bayer give um, for educational pursuits? So for professional qualifications, um, as long as it's relevant to the role, so whether it's the IMC or whether people want to go through the various levels of PCAM or the IAD, we will support them 100%. We give them time off and, and we support them with exams. And um, there's a certain amount of times that we will support them. So if they fail, we'll continue to support them. And, and uh, you know, we want to we wanna make sure that people... Um, pass their exams and it's hard that whole work life balance you know with you're trying to study and you're trying to work so what we will do is really try and create the time for people to study because we want them to pass those exams so with professional qualifications we uh, we will support them financially as well as um, developmentally give them the time to study to revise and uh, we use speech learning we use other organizations to help them to do mock exams and things like that as well so um, that's, that's how we put people get professional qualifications. And also on this, Anita, we have a question about a junior portfolio manager role. I know you mentioned that we've been looking. Um, what kind of technical capabilities are you looking for? Um, why don't you answer that, Anika, <laughs> in terms of technical capabilities? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can take a stab at it. Right. Um, Certainly you, you want to understand the different asset classes, how they work um, to an extent, um, how they're valued. And you, you want to be able to understand what's going on in the world around you. So know what's happening in markets, be able to explain that to clients, be able to explain why you're investing the way you are, why you're not investing in certain things. And then, you know, the big themes that are happening in markets, you want to have a firm grasp of uh, just, just what's going on. And some of the ways you can do this, you want to read, you know, for example, the Financial Times, um, research pieces. Um, I would say that's pretty much it. And a lot of the, earning, the learning um, happens on the job. So we're, I don't think we're expecting you to come in with all of the technical capabilities. I'm still learning. Um, and I'll pause there to see if Anita has anything she wants to add. Yeah, and I, and I think the, the portfolio manager team um, has a whole skills and experience. So we need more senior people, support and development, more junior people. And it's a great way to learn, as you said, Anika. We're not expecting to have 10 years of experience or 15 years of experience. We want people to join us and grow and learn and grow with us as an organization as well. So we want to make sure that there's a lot of various different, different levels of skills, various different levels of experience, because that's what makes a good team. I'm not sure if it's just me or Anita, you're, I, I can't hear you very well. Um, it seems like we have um, some connection issues I'm seeing in the Q&A. But, but we have a short time left, so let me just um, continue. Anita, what kinds of opportunities are there for promotions and advancement? You know, what are the, the ranks in the company? Sure, can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Great, great. So we have a corporate title structure. You come in as, as an employee, you move to, an, uh, so these are, you know, these are, uh, we, we have these bandings in place to make sure that we can provide growth and uh, internal equity 
as people gain more responsibility and experience, we move them through the organization. And clearly there's compensation levels that are attached to that too. But you come in as an employee, you move up through to an associate manager, then to an associate director, then to a director level, then to an executive director, and then to a managing director. So quite a lot of breadth for people to move through our organization as they gain more experience, as they gain more responsibility, but also as they deliver more as well. And that's really important as well. It's contributing and delivering to our, our goals as well, to our organization. Just some, some questions again around um, deadlines. Um, do we have any age limits for applicants? I think probably Absolutely not. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, if you're 15, that is a problem for us because we need to make sure from a health and safety perspective, people are supervised. So we won't take people who are like, young people who are 15, for example, because there are health and safety laws. But otherwise, there are no age limits as such. Anita, is your name Indian? It is indeed. <laughs> Oh, yes. we just had a question about that. Yes. Okay, good. Keep sending your questions in. Um, we have a question around this session being recorded. It certainly is, and it will be put up shortly after um, we finish up here. Um, Anita, can you just repeat um, where careers can be found, so where the different um, roles that we offer can be found in terms of our web page, yeah. that sort of thing. So at our Julius Bear, so the, on our group Julius Bear um, website, um, you can follow us on LinkedIn. We do post things on LinkedIn. And our apprentices, our apprenticeship program will be advertised on the government website every year around uh, the beginning, of, end of June, beginning of July. Good. And one more question for you both. Zoe, what did you want to be when you were growing up? I actually wanted to be a quantity surveyor, um, which I think is quite similar. It has got financials. And I did a week, a week work experience at a quantity surveying company, and I didn't enjoy it. And I would say that I never saw myself working in finance but I have loved every minute of it. And any last piece of advice that you can give our audience? Be yourself <laughs> would be all I would say. You know, Julius Bear really care about you and who you are. Um, and I've been myself the whole way through. If I've made a mistake, I will tell someone I'm not going to shy away. And it has actually shown and proven better to do that. Anita, on to you. What did you want to be growing up? I think I wanted to be a dancer. I used to be a break dancer when I was younger. But, um, I don't think that's a great career choice for me at, at this age. Um, but yes, I loved dancing. So there you go. <laughs> and any last tidbit of advice for our listening audience? I absolutely agree with, with Zoe. We are not looking for people to fit into a mold. We are looking for people to be their authentic selves. It's really important that people can bring themselves to work, all of their selves to work. So that doesn't matter what color, what age, what socioeconomic background you are from, what university you went to. We care about what you can bring to us. And, and that means um, you know, we're, all, we're all humans at the end of the day and we care about each other. So we are a great team, um, fortunate enough to be of a size where we know we, we all know each other and and I think that's that's really great I've been with Julius Bear for three years now and I have found um it's one of the best jobs that I've ever had in my 24 year career and I love it and I'm able to be myself excellent and I'll just share that I wanted to be an ambassador to the Bahamas um kind of doing that uh but you know charting my own path, path certainly and Julius Bear has really allowed me to do that and if there's one piece of advice that I, that I can give you it's to really be fearless um put your hand up uh ask questions and you know you want to work 
for a company that values what you have to say and values bringing your true authentic self to the business. Um, so certainly, you know, as Anita mentioned, it's much about you as it is about that, what that company is looking for. So certainly keep that in mind when you're applying and when you're looking for somewhere to work. So with that, uh, we're coming down to the end of the presentation. Um, I really hope that you have found it useful what we had to say. And just two things, two reminders, all of the sessions are recorded. And secondly, um, you can register on the Skills Workshop website. All that's left to do now is to thank Anita. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zoe. Um, and thank you, listening audience. And we really hope that you've enjoyed us. And we want to tell you to enjoy your weekend. See you next time. Anita, I have to apologize to you. Somehow you got un oops, let me